live, I'm going, yes. Somebody gets your wife, so I know I'm on uh, on air. Anybody there? Lapier, coaches up here. Oh, right. As soon as I know somebody's there, I'll start spurting. Anybody there yet? I've just heard a ping. I'm hoping. <laughs> Bloody ringtone wall up. Right, I've got a two on the top, is that three? Dean, how you doing mate? I'm glad somebody's with me. You own another three. I'll just give it a few more ticks. Then I'll go through me uh my itinerary. Oh I'm getting a few in now. Let's get this down my wazzy. Ah. Right, out of memory. Yes, I'm rolling up now. Gavin, my old mate. Out of memory. It's hard to do practical stuff. Once I've got it in front of me, then I know where I am. But once I've uh, gone through it, then I'll tick it off. Right, this morning, the, the forecast yesterday is supposed to be a nice sunny weekend. Load of crap this morning. It's colder than a witch's tit. But uh, now it's slowly brightening up. If I see the weather forecast like last night, if it's on central, and it don't look very good, I'll put BBC one try that, see if that's any better. This bloody pop look, eh? Right, spuds, which I mentioned on my last one. <coughs> that's a tater I put in earlier on. There's a few more. Which I've started since, because people have got spare seed potatoes. With them early, late, mids or whatever, just start them off in pots. They will come through, eventually. Once they come through them nice and healthy, like him, then I know he's a strong plant. Now, when I was up with the kids gardening club up to school, all the kids used to start one off, like him, Put their name in the label, meaning they'd look after it. They'd look after the blue. Have I got a wave at these shit or? All right, troops. They'd look after it. Once it was in that size or a bit bigger, once I see the roots coming out, then the final pot they'd use would be this one. Mm. This is a nine inch pot. I don't do centimetre shit. Meaning that potato or the potatoes, that's, that's what they're growing. Once it gets a bit root bound, every week when we had the kids garden club, they used to upend the pot. But when it was in there, they could upend it and it wouldn't collapse because the roots would be holding the thing together. And then they'd just take off the spuds that was big enough to eat. That plant has got to survive. They then put it back in and water it and feed it. More importantly, you've got to feed it as well. That plant has got to survive, same as everything else, and they go straight through the until we kids broke up for the uh, summer holes, and then they take that up with them. So you can grow spuds in containers. We'll come on to that later on as well. Moving on, right? Sweet potatoes. I did them. Uh, I trialed with them. It was a trial and error with everything I do. Sweet potatoes. I tried them about eight years ago in a raised bed but there was because i got a raised bed it got drainage the thing is with a sweet potato they they grow vertical meaning if you put them in the normal ground and you put a fork under them to get them out exactly the same as a normal tater that fork's going to go straight through the tater but with these with growing vertical it's got to be a raised bed or a bloody big bag or a bucket but the second year I tried it, because it is a tropical plant, and I thought you've got to keep the moisture and warmth in. So I manured the bed, give it a good soaking, and then covered it in uh, horticultural plastic, meaning that keep the moisture and the warmth in. Uh, I then cut a slice through the um, 
plastic and then plant through it. Now I've never had to water, the only uh, water they was getting was when it rained because the moisture was kept in there through the plastic. When I needed a <coughs> or checking on the growth all I'd do is lift the corner of the plastic, take the soil away and have a look see if it was a, a spud ready. Once a sweet potato was ready I'd then cut one off with a knife and then I'd earth up. This is instead of wasting the plant it's exactly the same as these when these are growing all these go in my raised beds i earth up now with straw and not soil that soil you have nicked earthing up you could have had more taters in there obviously if you go get no straw or wood chip or grass cutters or whatever then you've got to use the soil but earthing up you get more spuds from it and what i'm doing now with my sweet spuds and my normal spuds is just taking the soil away from around the plant obviously later on the flower when you get flowers on them that shows you this you should have a few taters that are ready just pinch the flowers off and start looking and you're more from then on but instead of lifting that old spud up and wasting it just take the spuds off that are ready then earth back up again and that plant will last you all through the growing season I used to have one full raised bed, 26 foot long, full of spuds. That's when the kids were on, four of us. Now I've knocked down to a quarter of a bed because my plants are lasting all the way through the growing year. Right, that's that crap. So spuds are good in a raised bed. If I'm straight into the, the, the ground and you have a, a, a good dry spell, the, that ground's going to go solid. You ain't going to be able to scrape away the moisture, the, the growing medium. Sweet corn, I don't grow so much now because there's only me and the missus at home. But uh, I still love the sweet corn as well. Meaning, if I've got a plant now, I could show you, but I eh? So we'll pretend that's a sweet corn. There's a stem on it. <coughs> if I planted sweet corn out, we have a leaf come off a joint and that leaf dives off. Exactly the same as sweet corn. That's where you get your knuckle on your plant. Exactly the same as a palm tree. Them ridges in a palm tree, that's where all the old leaves have come off. So when you plant your sweet corn out, plant up to the first two leaves. If them two leaves are dying off, take them off as well. And you bury that stem. That stem, once buried, once you get moisture on it, you will have new roots coming out the stem. And that will give you a stronger and healthier plant. And that happens with others, we'll, we'll come on to that in a bit. The better root structure you've got in any plant, the stronger and healthier plant it's going to be, and you don't need canes up them. Uh, exactly the same as runner beans, all I use now is a wigwam, three canes and three plants going up. We're feeding the family, not the street. And when, when your beans are ready, don't forget, 90% of uh, fruit veg flowers are full of water so you've got to give them water and I'm all raised beds anyway so I can't over water because I've got the drainage and don't forget to feed as well with your runners if you need to pick any for tea whatever you go around picking them all off and you go around again three days later and you, you look around the back of them and there's at least four you have missed and you think how the bloody have I missed them still pick them all the, all of them over the top, the beans themselves, still pick them and then take the beans out because you can still use them as a normal runner bean. You take the normal runner bean off, slice them, top and tail them, skin them, but we'll take the oval uh, beans off as well and just take the beans out. Extras for you. Right, pricking out. Uh, somebody asked me a question last week when I put my last dirty video on if somebody asks a question i ain't got time to have a i'll have a nose if we come to, when we come to the end but somebody asked a, a question last week about pricking out crook stage i like to do it so i'm going to show you how i got to do it i just do one of these these are my eating leeks these was picked uh sown on the 14th of the second so we'll pretend i'm picking him out there can you see that shit? Got to get the fork right under them. I want all the root out. 
not as much root as I can. I want it all out. Meaning, I've got it all out there. Crook stage is usually, you still got the seed head on the top, but it's a crook, looks like a bloody crook, obviously. If you get them off then, then you don't get that length of root on it. Obviously, these are staying in there because I'm eating leeks. And these are growing here until the end of June. But if I'm pricking some it out, say an exhibition leek or onion, and I want them in a plastic drinking cup, then uh, that's the position. Probably root will be down there or something. Here's one I filled earlier. So if I put my finger in there, that's where the seedling is going to go. When I fill me, some of I forgot to tell you, which I'll show you on this other one. I fill that cup with my growing medium. How do I firm him in? I don't push it in. That's how I firm it in. You can see he's dropped down there. Then I make me all ready for him to go in. What I started off using a few years ago, when this first come out, this is the best thing to come out for the garden from Bloody Moons. Mycorrhizal fungi. Anything new that comes out for the gardener, I look into it. Find out who's flogging the best one. Ring them up. Then uh, I, I buy bulk for our trading sheds. And obviously I get it cheap. But I've tried quite a few, and this is a bloody good one. Well, obviously that's why I get it. Mycorrhizal fungi, what does it do? It colonises the root structure, meaning it takes over. High few roots come out of that normal roots, and they go for yards deeper, giving you a stronger and healthier plant. The good thing about this stuff, you only need a pinch in the hole. I've just made the hole in there. Put a pinch in the hole. Put my seedling in. Once I put the seedling in, which there is the little chap, I then firm him. I've got to put this down to sort the bugger out. I then firm him in. The mycorrhizal fungi becomes active once it's watered. The next thing I'm going to do is water that because I've just potted him on. Once that water is a mycorrhizal fungi, that kick starts the mycorrhizal fungi into into. It's like when you do your wine, you use a yeast for your wine. That's the kick start. Moisture on this is a kick start for that. When I started using this on everything, when it first came out, it was that good. The plants was going that well. I was running out of room in the greenhouse, so now I don't use this until I plant out. So if it is an established plant, like the pot leak up there, then it will be about that much. Can you see that there? Oh, you can. Oh. Probably half of that, you don't need that much. So now I don't use, I mean, obviously if you've got a big greenhouse, then use it. But it is superb stuff. One application per life of the plant. That's a good thing about this. So I then rung the gaffer up. Says, "What about all me fruit trees? Established fruit trees on the plot." He said, "Well, if I'm established, it needs a fistful in each hole. But once it touches the root, it then colonise the whole of the root structure. It might take two or three months because if an established fruit tree, you got bloody roots exactly the same what you got on top. But once it's done, that's it then for the life of the plant. Superb stuff." Right, that's that crap. Uh, these are greyhound cabbage, 29th of the 3rd. Can you see them there? Just coming through. Can you see that? Oh, you can see that, can you? Meaning that's six days. This is cold end of the greenhouse these are in. Meaning you don't need warmth. Obviously warmth's going to get your seedlings come through quicker. But you don't need warmth. All you need is frost free and it's down to about two again last night so these still come through if them was a bit bigger i'd prick them out as well but they ain't big enough yet <coughs> uh, right 
mentioned earlier on about planting out your sweet corn you plant up to the first true leaves this one this is a Carolina Reaper chili pepper we'll just have a quick perv of him yeah he needs potting on or oh, I'll show you any road but I don't water these until they tell me they want weight in him I let them go dry as a ferret Meaning I'm going to fight for survival. If you look after them like they, they get too bloody weak. Same as uh, humans. So. Uh, that's my next size pot up for him. So I've put another. Firm him down. Not pushing him down. Can you see that? Oh. Bugger, I can hear a bee or a wasp. If the lens on my tadger. Right, that's... Yeah, look at it's bloody hell, it's huge like a bloody shite hawk. Right, there's metal hole there. I have to might as well bump some in, show you. Because this one ain't going to loop anyway. My cars are fun going in the bottom of there. Get me label out. Up in my little chap he's got nice roots around him that ain't gonna collapse even if it's dry it is dry as a badger's tadger but he still ain't gonna collapse because he's got a, a good root structure on him bung him in and firm him in upright as you're firm around you want him nice and upright i'll then top dress that with more compost fed it in down firm him in and give him a good weight to him with greenhouse Temperature water, rain water. Uh, them range we had a couple of months ago. My water butts ran out uh, it three days ago. I had to fill up with tap water. Then uh, two cupfuls of Jay's fluid went in that. The lid was kept off and left for 48 hours. Sort that out. Labelling my Reaper. Foliar sprays, great believer in foliar feeding, i.e. when the sun's gone off everything, so it's late at night. Well, if I can get away with it, what it used to do was on a, a Friday evening, everything in the greenhouse, back of the garden, also on the allotment, fruit trees, everything, they got foliar fed. Two of the good ones, Epsom salts and maxi crop, which is seaweed based. Monthly feed, meaning I've got uh, four different, well, five different feeds now, and uh, weekly intervals. Flit sprayer, that's what I use. The mist on this, superb. The smaller the particle of water you can get, the better it will hang on to the plant. <coughs> Would spray uh, when the sun lights off them. Massive crop which is seaweed based, anything that is seaweed based, it is beautiful stuff. Uh, same as seaweed, obviously. Done that. This thing about planting um, plants deeper, when you pot them on, that goes with tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, also, and all your greens, if you're planting any greens on. There's my red cabbage, that was planted up to the stem on this end. So when he gets potted up again, them two leaves are died off. So they then go to the next stem up. That stem that you bury, this is on your Tom's cues or whatever, you will have more roots coming out of them, giving you a stronger and healthier plant. It works. Insecticides. I've started using... See the mist on that, bloody superb. This is neem oil. I used this, um, bloody hell, 10 years ago when it first came out for the gardener. You can get this off eBay. But uh, 5 mil to the litre. Because when we used to do the kids' garden club up the school, we couldn't use any insecticides and that. All I could use up there was soapy water. But using the soapy water, you've got it. If, if you spray them, say on a Tuesday, which we used to do up there, you've got to spray again two days later. It'll kill the aphids off what it does it blocks the air passages but it don't job the eggs then when the eggs hatch out two days later you've, you've got to spray again 
but that does work it's a good one and the, the soap works as well but you've got to spray every couple of days keep up with that uh, all the nurseries are closed now which we mean the quagmire ie for plants and um, greens as well somebody asked me yesterday I see this out because they know I'll start my own leaks off in these so I've got one and I've put her name in it in fact that's it there that's for the mother Julie because I can't get out and get no plants so until they come to the senses and, and open the um, nurseries back up again we're in the quagmire if you're not growing or starting your stuff off yourself but the good thing about Lidl which we use they still do plants and every now and then they start doing veg and one of the good ones I bought out a few uh, a couple of months ago was um, cabbage cauliflowers sprouts and whatever that was only plugs but I planted them out last week and very soon they should be getting more veg out i.e. leeks stuff like that so I'll keep your eye out in for Lidl as well you'll be able to get some greens from there Fully phased on that one. Um, yesterday, for the first time for moons, I had some posts come through, meaning I've, I've started up again in the post office, clearing all the stuff. Plus, I posted to um, catalogues out to my mates. So, if you have ordered anything online before all this Corona crap started, you should be able to get the stuff out. Because I've ordered some um, Showmaster onions from Marshalls. So they should be coming soon, I hope. Uh, done that crap. Fruit trees, any fruit trees on on the you got up your garden plot or whatever, you can you can prune them now. Uh, on the news, I started pruning. My last of my pruning was uh, last week. That'll be on my next blog as well. What what did my photos on? But it was on the news last night as well because all the Eastern Europeans have legged it from the fruit farms and panicking now people getting the fruit and the people are volunteering and you can see them going around just pruning all the fruit trees. So good time now to start pruning. The warm weather we got <coughs> is supposed to last, well it's supposed to be bloody warm today. It's still got the cold wind as long as that clears off. But it's better than what it was in the road. We're supposed to be warm for another week, so anything you've got in the greenhouse and it's been hardened off or it's in the cold end of the greenhouse, then uh, plant them out. Because my pot leaks and blanch leaks, them are going out uh, next week, during the week, because I need the room in here. And because it's going to be good weather for a week at least, I've got a week to get established. And once everything is planted out, this is an army raised beds, I'll then straw it. So if you do get a, a, a frost or whatever, it'll keep that frost away from the roots. If a frost hits the tops like my taters you got out, or you don't arm the plant, obviously it's going to knock it back a bit because the frost has chopped the, the new shoots, but he's still going to survive. It'll just knock him back a week or something. But as long as them roots are protected, which they are because I'm in the ground, then you're more right. Uh, raised beds I'm all raised beds this is through trial and error I started using raised beds about 30 odd years ago on our plot now three quarters of the site have got raised beds scaffolding boards if you get a split in a scaffolding board now they call you using health and safety it's only a good thing about bloody health and safety for the gardener so I just ring all the scaffolds up asking for a used 13 foot board delivered get a price of them we can get them for seven and a half quid but if you dry them and cover them in plastic as well they're going to last your bloody moons but even if it's if a raised bed is just six seven inches that is better than nothing the only one disadvantage with a raised bed they dry out quicker and i've got around that boy whatever i plant out i then top, top dress it with straw that's where me, me gladdies are growing through or whatever whatever i'm bloody growing just straw it that keeps the moisture and the warmth in and if you stable manure then obviously I've got extra nuggets in 
and that's a feed as well if you've got no straw use grass cuttings wood chip anything uh, right composting I'm still trialing Erin with my own compost I've been growing it for using it for bloody moons and I'm still learning myself what I've done now part of my carbon input is my brown waste Lou Rolls egg boxes nothing coloured I'm ripping these up while I'm watching the box all sat behind the missus on the computer. Uh, and these shredded paper, this is paperback books, the older the better. But this is from a micro shredder, meaning, well, a bloody cut it fine as a fart, ain't they? I did go just for using the paper, and still doing a trial, and then I thought I'm missing my bulk, which is that, although I'm ripping these up. Those lumps I want in my compost. Uh, I did a trial a few years ago and I'm doing another one again. I know it bloody works but I've got to prove it again. This is um, Leventon M3. That's the best compost you can get. So I'll put one of my onions in there against my own compost. That's another onion, exactly the same size, identical. But you can see the lumps in my compost, which is through them as well, back on the carbon. That's why I want my lumps. If I was to water that M3, there's nothing in there. I'd even put vermiculite in, which I normally do. But if I was to water and feed the M3, it'll just go straight through. And it's only the roots that'll hang onto it. If I water or feed mine, because I've still got lumps in there, because that's after three weeks old, and that'll hang on to the moisture and warmth. So now I'm back to using my bits of cardboard, egg boxes, lure rolls, ripped up and the shredded paperback books. When the old man was in hospital, he had his ticker done. Went visiting and he says, go and empty that our kid. I thought, go and bed it. Anyway, I emptied it, I thought, hey, bloody throwing that away. So I stamped on it, squashed it, and smuggled it out down my underpants. There's paper mache in it, when they discharged him. They'd get him about ten of them, because they hadn't got a, a downstairs toilet. And he was just ripping them up for two weeks, convalescing. Next one, where am I? <laughs> Done that shit. Two more foliar feeds. When I go around doing my talks, what I take with me, my flit, flare, flit sprayers, which I've, I've finished now, I've run out of them. When I do my talks, I take with me micros of fungi. That's a five in a bag, that's cheap as a fart. It's the best one you can get. Mate come down our sheds uh, a couple of weeks ago. He says, I've had a bag of this from Wilco. It's cheaper than yours. I says, read the, the small print on the arse end. And it was just for roses, and he saw bugger. So then he went home, come back and bought a bag off me. This is the best one for the fruit and veg man. I'll get the best. So I'll flog that. I also flog me, me, me charge, that's a quid a bag. That's beetle crap. Whatever manure you can get, there's summit in that manure, which isn't in other manure. That's why I use loads of different manures. So that's beetle crap, that's a good one. Another one is liquid fish or fish hydrolysate that's good as a foliar feed as well excellent stuff you get that on ebay but it's going to cost you another one i use in our training sheds this is basalt rotus from reaming i get this by the ton if it's volcanic rock dust if it's volcanic it's from the center of the earth meaning got trace elements and minerals which we ain't got up here but when I finish the raised bed if I've just got a um, last cauliflower out or something I then top dress it with my compost or manure that is full of worms it's only half inch top dressing well then water it then cover it with the weed suppressant then worms do then do my digging and it's also all my beds have a top dressing with their rock dust as well good shit 
Good shit, boss. Next one. Uh, compost tea, I'm going to cover that another time. If you make good compost, get more out of manure. Uh, get more out of your compost by making compost tea. I'm doing it in the States. I've been doing it for a while. And all the farmers are doing it. I'm trying to get out to do it. So I've got to get everything set up before I start doing that. And uh, some of we had in the post yesterday. These are free seeds from Marshalls. I wore going to do now Tom's. There's only me and the missus. But because they am free, I'm going to bung them in. So I've just had the packet. There's a little... Uh, where you cut across, but there's three seeds on the top of there, meaning there ain't many in there. If I cut across there, be careful the seeds don't drop out of there. So I'll just have a pair of salmonies in there and I'll put some up. Mm, that's six seeds in there. Get a bit of compost in there. Right, got my compost in. Firm him down. Only three come out, that'll do. That's enough for me. One, two, three. Can you see that? Oh, you don't see that, can you? Bloody hope so. Top them down again. <coughs> All I'm going to do is cover that with the Mickey light. Level him. Nice little tap. Then wait at him. Cold into the greenhouse. Bung my label in, that's him ready. So now, I am doing tomatoes this year, but it's only because they're bloody free. Select seeds, I mentioned these uh, on my last talk. This is a chap who's in the NVS, National Veg Society, and he's took these over from up uh, Cheshire somewhere. Meaning, he does trial in there as well. He don't dish out shit. So I'll get me... These are the Safrain F1 is bought out, 8 ounce onion. I'm trolling them this year. But I've had quite a bit of stuff off him. So if you want decent seed, you know you're going to get decent seed off him. Yeah, that's that crap. I think that's about, we're getting close to that crap. I'm going to have a look now for any questions. You're good there, Dean Rummers. Just put me studs in. What? I'm just having a perv through now. Dave, I've just seen you up top. Steve, wave, wave. Anybody got a question? I'm looking for questions. Tell you the truth, I don't know what I'm frigging doing here. Troops, I'm going to have to leg it soon. I've run out of shit. Basically, in the next week, because I know this is good weather, there's most of the stuff going out. And uh, once these need potting on, I shall pot on again. And they will go out into a decent raised bed, where I know I've got good stuff in. Uh, that's about it, I think, troops. Okay, that'll do. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you later. Take it easy.